All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another image critique from the Digital Photo Rec Photo Group. I am Toby. And I'm Christina. And we're trying something different for this evening's photo critique. We recorded the number of images uh, submitted since the last uh, image critique, and then we did a random number generator from 1 to... 14. Well, no, we picked 14 images. Well, we said we were going to critique 14 images. And so 14 times we ran a run, random number generator between 1 and I think it was actually 165. Absolutely uh, just kind of bowled over by uh, the quality and the number of submissions. I'm going to drop the number of images that you can submit per week to just two. So I really want you to think about um, the images you're submitting. Really pick the strongest, your best work. Um, but tonight we're going to run through randomly picking 14 images. Um, and we're going to give you our thoughts. We're going to try to be a little bit more on target with our thoughts. Uh, you know, sometimes before we may have just said, I like it, um, and maybe didn't um, cover it as well. So here we go. First up, from Angie. And I've talked to Angie a bunch on Facebook. Um, she has got this cool snow melt picture. So we're going to judge images, uh, we should say first, based on three criteria. Um, first, technical ability, composition, and content and so technical ability is pretty self-explanatory it's the exposure proper was the shutter speed and the aperture appropriate for the type of photo that um, the person was going to take composition again pretty obvious did it follow the rule of thirds in such a way that it drew your eye to the subject or the main focus of the photo or, and, or does it break the rule of thirds in a way that works exactly yes um, or, and not just the rule of thirds, but, you know, other... Leading lines, yes. balance. Exactly. Those are things we're going to be looking for when we're talking about composition. And lastly, content refers to the visual impact that the photo has. So was the photo trying to communicate some sort of message, or was it just a snapshot? Um, so, yeah, so uh, those are kind of the criteria that we've chosen so that it's a little bit more clear and straightforward as to what our opinions are and why we like certain photos more than others. Okay, so this first image from Angie. It's a cool shot. That's my first thought about it. My second is technical qualities. Looks good, 4,000th of a second, F8, ISO 8. You probably could have gone a little bit slower in shutter speed and dropped your ISO, but in this kind of um, you know bright, well-exposed image, that noise isn't really going to show up, so it's not an issue. So that all looks fine. Composition, uh, the, the the focus I'm guessing is this drop, where the splash from the drop, and uh, it. It's cool, but it's almost lost uh, because there's just so much going on around it and it's just smack centered right there. So I would like to see this tighter, lower, cropped in a little bit, um, kind of remove some of the brown in the frame uh, in the top left corner, I think would work well for me. Um, but you know, catching drops like this is pretty impressive. I wonder if you used a burst mode and fired, sprayed and prayed, um, or if you just were patient, tried many times, and eventually got one. So I'd love to see a comment about that, but those are my thoughts about this. Tighter, remove some of that distracting elements in the background, maybe even get a little bit lower so that you're really on level almost with the drop. And that might be difficult to do in this situation because of all the snow around. Yep, and I agree with everything you said. So the only thing that I'm going to add is um, content and so in terms of content um, I guess I could get in a little bit deeper as to what this photo kind of represents to me and I think that the melting of the ice the water or, or rather the water and then the little ice little bit of ice around the edges sort of kind of signifies you know that spring is coming maybe um, but at the same time it kind of seems like a shot that was taken to sort of achieve this kind, this type of, you know, of, of shot where the water is frozen in the air and the droplets are frozen in the air, so this high speed shot. So um, I don't think that the intended purpose of this image was to communicate any sort of message, mm -hmm. uh, and it was, you know, it was done really well for its purpose. So and I, yeah, I agree with the compositional. Um, tweaks that Toby suggested. And that's it. 
And I wonder if you got any water splashed on the end of your lens when you were done taking this picture. All right, moving on. All right, so we looked at a picture from Digital Canvas 72 last week, um, probably the same beach, I think. This looks like a composition um, because I'm pretty sure that... I think you mean a composite. A composite, thank you. Um, a composite because I'm pretty sure that the uh, galaxy cloud bits in the background um, is not a picture you have taken or at least wasn't present there. But, um, so, well, first thing, technical qualities. Let's just separate the uh, composite part of it and just look at the, the beach in the foreground. Looks good to me. We're at five seconds, so we got that softening of the water. I think I would like to see it even longer um, to really smooth that water out. If this is kind of in that in-between state, uh, which you know, shows a little bit more motion from the waves. And so if that's what you're trying to achieve, that's good. But for me, it's just kind of not quite smooth enough. I'd like to see it a little bit uh, smoother. And um, composition, it's split pretty nicely in thirds. Uh, I think there's a lot of the front beach that is lit really brightly um, and doesn't really add a lot to the composition. So I might... Uh, move the frame up just a little bit, get more of your composite image back there because it's very interesting looking um, and leave a little bit more of the beach off the frame. And then as far as just kind of speaking to me or the, the content of the image, um, it's interesting. I like it. Uh, it's, you know, it's different. But as I said about the other image, I'm not crazy about the colors, the very orange beach very kind of teal colored water um, but again i do like the clouds in the back the uh, galaxy clouds yep so i think i i kind of really like this picture because well in terms of technical ability um i don't know i sort of like that it's not super duper smooth um i think that there's a, an area here that's a little bit in shade and it's a little bit distracting. Like when I look at this image, this stands out to me a lot because everything else is so evenly lit and it just looks like there's a weird line that's not exposed the same way that the rest of this of the image is exposed. Uh, in terms of composition, I, I, I like the composition. I usually tend to prefer more background over foreground, but I think that you have split these three sections of the image in a, a way that is very pleasing to my eye. So this is just slightly bigger than this part, and then this is bigger than this part. So that I kind of like that. Uh, and I like the colors. It's a little bit, I don't know, psychedelic, I guess. It's just, I usually tend to gravitate towards uh, softer, more muted, like light colors, but I like the colors in this image. And lastly, your description here is image living on another planet. You're enjoying the breeze and relaxing on an alien beach. And it's really cool. I mean, I think in terms of it being a sci-fi sort of shot that makes you think about where you could be or, you know, what this might look like if you're on another planet, I think it's well done. So. Nice. I will, I'll just say it looks like um, you were maxed out with aperture and your ISO as low as you could go. So a five second exposure um, was probably as long as you could go. And you actually found that you were overexposed some. And you were able to bring down the levels. I'm going to guess that you're shooting with raw. And I'll just add that I do think that the composite is done very well. This is um, it's a nice mix back here. And other than I'm you know pretty sure that's not something we'd see on this world. I think you could fool somebody. All right, moving on. Thank you, Digital Canvas 72. All right, next up is this image by Tony. Do you want to go first on one of these or want to alternate who sure. goes first? Yeah, why not? So in terms of technical ability, I think that this shot, I, you know, I can't tell because of the size of the image if this area right here is a little bit clipped. Like there's something kind of pixely want, about the image. Uh, do you want to explain what clipped, what you mean by clipped? Clipped means that there is no detail either in the highlights or the shadows, so... You've lost information. You've lost information, right. So when an image is way too bright so that it looks 
in such a way that it looks all white, if there's areas of an image that look completely white, that means there's no information there. So you've overexposed, blown out parts of the image. So that's kind of what this looks like to me almost. Um, so I'm going to say that I'm going to make the assumption that this photo was saturated in post-processing to make the sunset look the way it is. And I think it was a little bit overdone. So in terms of technical ability, I think that you could have done, you could have toned down the saturation. Um, in terms of composition, I, I, I sort of like the image. I think it's a little bit crooked. You could have fixed your horizon line and straightened. And I think it's so slight, but I am just really... Do you think the right needs to come up a little bit? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, it's so it's... very slight, but I, I am like super sensitive to that. I always notice it and it bugs me. I'm super picky, I know. Uh, yeah, so you could have, you could straighten the image, and I like that the sunset itself is on the left. You know, it's sort of following the rule of thirds, so, you know, everything leads up to the sunset and then spreads out from there. So I like that, and, you know, there's not really much to say about content, except that it's a nice sunset. It seems a little bit oversaturated, so it doesn't look super realistic, but there's nothing really to communicate other than just a nice sunset, a nice evening. So that was well done. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I like the uh, composition. As far as the technical settings go here, all looks good. I, I, you know, the, um, the reflection along the beach is nice. It's not really technical. But one thing that I would, I would like to see is either, uh, you know, the, the light levels in the foreground of this beach area here. I either like to see them lower or higher so that it's all silhouette or that there is more information here um, with just a little bit more color. Because with this amount of sun, it feels like these should be a little bit brighter here. Um, so I would like to see those light levels brought up a little bit. You could um, slow your shutter down just a tiny bit. You could raise your ISO a little bit to get that to be a little bit brighter. Or this, you can brighten it in post. Or you can brighten it in post too, especially if you're shooting raw. Um, you know, I know some folks are out there shooting JPEG or RAW. RAW always gives you a lot more latitude in the amount of exposure changes you can make in editing in general. Um, and it's also, it's interesting to me that there's, we don't have quite as much detail in, in the waves from this color up here too. So it does look like this, a lot of this was done with post and, and the waves didn't quite pick that up as well. But I, I like the way it's framed um, and the clouds are quite dramatic. So overall, good. Okay, thank you, Tony. Moving on, we've got one from Rose, and I'll go first and talk. Now, technically, well, so this was a, uh, looks like a point-and-shoot camera, um, Sony W80. I'm not quite familiar with that, but, um, you know, our settings here are all good, but what we seem to be suffering from is a very low-resolution image. So I'll come back to that in a second. I think the composition is very interesting. The only... Um, issue I might have is we got a person who kind of standing up there and I didn't notice them at first but now I'm having trouble looking away from that person uh, and I think I would like the, this to be framed a step or two to the left so that we could see where the monks were heading down the road um, uh, and that would also at the same time remove that um, person standing down there but that person might be part of the story so I don't know um, but what keeps distracting me from really enjoying this image is that our, our um, image quality here is quite low uh, and we got a lot of pixelation and a lot of chroma coloring noise up in the shadows. Uh, but otherwise, I really like it. And in some respects, I kind of like that their feet are soft down here and showing motion as they're moving down the road. But frame it to the left a little bit, get rid of that distracting person, and maybe next time you can show up with uh, a higher quality. I don't believe that this camera should have given provided this low a quality. That's what maybe. I was kind of wondering. Do you think it was cropped a lot? We don't know. Because if it was cropped, um, you know, the, the original quality would have probably been better. And I would, you know, I would honestly feel like, kind of do feel like it was cropped because... It was shot at 17 millimeters, and I know that it's a 
small sensor, but mm -hmm. still would have been a wide shot. So, okay, points on the cropping, because the cropping was really well done. Um, I do feel like the horizon line is a little crooked, but I like where you cropped it, you know, up here to, you're using, in terms of composition, you're using these trees to frame the subjects, um, and this highlight, like beneath the shadows, is sort of framing the shadows at the bottom. So that, I like the composition a lot. You were very thoughtful and you did it really well. Again, in terms of kind of removing distracting elements, I would agree with Toby that I didn't notice this before, but now I do and it is kind of distracting. Although, again, it could be part of the story as well. This is also a little bit distracting, so I would get rid of that. Um, in terms of this, this is a great image. I, I love the light. The light is really amazing and it adds to the story of the I image. Agree. And and I really, really enjoy, enjoy looking at this image. Nice. Thank you, Rose. All right. Okay, so I'll start. Um. Oh, good. Because <laughs> I'm just chuckling. Well, this is a very humorous photo, for sure. It's really funny. Um, my cats would certainly not allow this to happen. Have we ever tried? I've put things on them and they haven't liked it. <laughs> I have put things on them. Okay. Moving on. Uh, in terms of technical ability, it's nicely exposed. The image seems very nicely exposed. I don't know if you use flash or just... It seems like there's some window light some, coming. Yeah, we got some nice window light from the yeah, left. But also, like, maybe a tungsten light. Like, there's light coming from a tungsten bulb or a fluorescent light. It just seems like there's another light source illuminating the room. There's a lot of distractions. <laughs> like, there's this and there's that and there's that. And there's just, like just so many distractions so it kind of just looks like a snapshot um and so in terms of composition yeah i would say this composition isn't the best and finally content i think that the goal was to entertain and take a very funny portrait of a pet and so that was certainly accomplished so yeah it's oh. I definitely enjoy looking at it. It's I agree. Cute. Here's here's what I would suggest. Um, if taking this again, go for a portrait a mode. Um, you know, rotate your camera and get in tight. Or crop this image so that it's really just the woman uh, with the dog on her lap. Otherwise framed very nicely. I like that we can see her mouth. Um, I like to have a little bit of a half smile back there. I often ask when I'm taking pictures and I know that person's mouth is going to be partly in, but we can't see their eyes, because people can smile with their eyes, um, and you would you would get that. I bet she's smiling with her eyes, but we don't, we just kind of get flat across. So I'd say a little half smile um, would be fun and add just a little bit to this image. And just a little bit lower, I think, might help get some of the shading that the wig is causing on the dog's face here, so that we can see just a little bit more of the dog's quote-unquote expression. But fun photo. Thank you, Ramon. Moving on, Marianto, Morning Breeze in Singapore. All right, so I'll talk a little bit about our, let's see, can we get to our, yes, our metadata here. Wide angle lens, nice and wide, but we're not seeing any distortion here. That's good. Horizon line is set nicely. Um, one one hundredth of a second at F8, ISO 100. All of that looks good. Okay, so composition, uh, this is tricky because I, I see the benefit of having the palms, trees in there, um, but that really interesting building over on the right, I would like to give that a little bit more breathing room and it would also shift the sun to the left. So that means I would move this shot, maybe chop off the leftmost full palm and, um, sorry, not chop off, but reframe so that we have just those palms leaning in to balance the building over on the right and the sun would be a little bit more on the left as well. Um, but otherwise, nice and nice colors. And, you know, I think by moving left a little bit, we might cut out some of this uh, rock down here, which there's not much going on there and maybe even a little bit of trash. Those are things that you can 
quote unquote Photoshop out. That's the second time I've used quote unquote Photoshop out before you take the picture by actually moving them. I often try to look around for things that are going to probably catch the eye and move them. Or you could use Photoshop afterwards. And then as far as kind of like the content of this image, it's, it's a nice photograph. Uh, as I said, that building is really interesting. I would almost like to see some other pictures that shoot across to the building and catch the reflection of the sun. Really emphasize that building because that, that is unique to this area. But otherwise, a nice photograph. The only thing I have to add to this image is about composition. And I think this would be a place worthwhile to go back and revisit and try to photograph it from a different perspective and from a different viewpoint because I agree that not only these are distracting elements but all of this and all of that and there's like this huge gap here in the middle that kind of doesn't really add to the image so I I do understand the desire to want to include this as well as that in the photo to give a sense of the place but I you know I might even go up here and try to shoot through the palm trees and into here with a zoom lens and kind of compress this whole area. Um, or, you know, like just shoot, zoom in as much as you can. Um, so yeah, I think, or just kind of focus on this or on this. So yeah, I, I would, I would say revisit and then try to Purchase it from a different point of view. Mm -hmm. This was taken with, as I said at the beginning, a really wide angle lens and I add a really wide focal length. And this is something I've talked about before. Um, it's very easy to just kind of, to take a wide angle that just ends up uh, losing your subject. And I think that that is some of what has happened here. But uh, thank you, Marianto. All right, we have one from Vin. And who started with the last one? It's your turn. Okay. So, this image is sort of interesting. Um, I think in terms of technical ability... Oh, feed, so this person wanted feedback on the editing. Alright, well let's hmm. talk about technical abilities. Technical abilities in terms of taking the photograph and then on the editing, okay? I, it, well, it was well done. I mean, the, the exposure is right and you have enough highlights or enough information in the highlights and the shadows uh, to say that you've taken a good exposure, so so I like that. Um, in terms of the editing, the image looks a little bit blue, so you may have wanted to do that on purpose, just to kind of create a little bit of moodiness in the image, but it's obviously was taken when the sun was out, and so I would expect a warmer exposure. Did you sharpen the car as well? Um, I, I, I'm only asking, I'm, I'm trying to guess what it is that you want specific feedback on in terms of the editing. So another thing that you could have done is perhaps sharpen the car to kind of bring it more, uh, you know, to bring more attention to it. So if you did, then, you know, the car looks really, really sharp. So that, that, that's nice. In terms of composition, the composition doesn't feel terribly balanced to me. There's this big area that's kind of empty except for this little rag or paper or trash or right there. So I don't love that. Um, I would have liked these guys to kind of balance out the white of the car. So maybe next time if you were going to recreate or try to take this photo again, I might have moved the car more into the frame or found a different angle to photograph it so that these people take out more of the frame and the photo is a little bit more balanced. Um, so yeah, that's my take on it. Okay. So I'm going to say, I know you're asking for feedback on the editing, but uh, we're going to give feedback on the other pieces too, just as uh, Christina has. So I, I agree with uh, what Christina says. The editing, I think the colors, the muted colors of the shot work well for me and the sharpness and the, and the tone of the car. I, I like that. I think it works well. But the, for composition, I'd really like you to shuffle to the right uh, several steps, which, um, but still getting about the same amount of the front of this car. And I think that's going to keep these people back here, this four in a row who are kind of arranged like cell phone bars as far as in height. Um, that's going to keep those people from intersecting, and you're going to be able to see the fronts of several of the other cars. I believe there's at least one, probably two more cars lined up there. And so I'd like to see a little bit of that. 
and uh, a you know a softening in the background of each car successively as it's further and further out of focus. Another thing to think about is that we don't really know what's going on in this image, so that can be a useful technique to kind of create interest. But I think for this image is a little bit confusing because no one's really doing anything that would lead us to sort of come to a conclusion of what's happening. So you kind of want to give enough information to tell people what's going on, but you know, still want to keep a little bit of mystery in the photo, if that's your mm -hmm. goal anyway. Yep. So yeah, I, I would have tried to illustrate what's happening in a different kind of way. So maybe getting close, um, you know, trying to talk to these guys that are there and getting up portraits of them or something like that. So this looks to me like it could be a photo, part of a photo essay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'd say if, if, you, if there was a reason you really framed it this way, um, backing up just a little bit and going all the way to 55 millimeters uh, would give just a little bit tighter look, a little bit softer in the background would be another way to do that, but I think the moving to the left would be good. All right, thank you, Vin. I do like your little logo yeah, watermark. Plus, very the, cool. plus it's it's um, unobtrusive, but it gives uh, your contact, which is nice. I like that. Yeah. All right, thank you, Vin. All right, hey, we got another one from Digital Canvas seventy two. You got lucky in tonight's lottery. Uh, we're gonna be paying careful attention, I think, in the future and trying to not pick doubles because that doesn't seem fair when so many submit it. But here we go. Um, overall, I, I like this image, but I think there are some things. Uh, or let's let's check our technical qualities real quick here. Um, shooting with 16 to 85, um, quite wide at 16, 500th of a second, 80, 160 ISO, um, and um, that all looks very good. We got a nice blue sky, and we still have uh, details in the shadows down here as well. That's good. Um, as far as composition goes, it's not bad. Um, but I think there are some things that could make it stronger. And now I'm saying this without seeing the scene at all. There could be very distracting objects over on the left or the right that you were really trying and you didn't have um, this. But I'd like to see a shot either um, to the right, straight on towards the house, which should catch the um, orange maple and the, and the red behind it. And that would showcase the ending of this road in such a way that um, a little bit better. Or pull back down, walk backwards down this road a little bit and um, get and frame it just a little bit tighter that would give you a sense of this road leading up to the house. Now again, both of those things might not work for this picture because of you know who knows what's behind you, 50 uh, yellow school buses or something like that. But, um, but the colors are nice, the exposure is nice, and I think it's a nice image but there are some things that could make it a little bit stronger. It does it does feel like fall, um, except this does feel kind of closed down and not actually terribly inviting the house itself. But, yeah. So in terms of technical ability, I would say that the photo was... Uh, I like the focal length that you chose. I think that it works really well. There's not a whole lot of distortion and you were very thoughtful about keeping the ends of the trees inside the frame. I would have liked a little bit more room on this one, but it's not a big deal. I mean, I, I just, I like the way that the trees frame the house. And I, I just really like this image. Um, so I think, you know, I usually tend to gravitate away from wide angle lenses, but I think in this case, the wide angle lens works. One thing about composition that I would have done differently is maybe fill the frame mo with more sky and mo move the house and the tree below to kind of, you know, like the bottom third of the frame. And, you know, I don't really care about this road that much. And I disagree with you about moving to a different place and trying to capture it from a different perspective. I like this perspective. I think it shows the size of the house compared to the trees and it uses the trees to frame the house on this part of the image. Um, the only thing that I would like to see more of is more sky and less of this part. Otherwise, you know, really, really nice shot. And uh, lastly, I would say try not to saturate your colors in such a way that the edges look kind of brown. Like you can really tell when you saturate an image too much, you start to get a little bit of weird fringing on the edges. 
So I don't think they did in this case. I think. Oh really? Well, they do say right over there. Um, basically, straight out of the camera. All I did oh, was wow. convert it to JPEG. I think it was just a, a fall. Oh wow! Peak of fall colors. I think with, I'm uh, looking good light. at it from a weird angle, from where I am from the screen. On my monitor. On the monitor. Yeah. So I think it looks a little bit saturated. Never mind. Take it back. Okay. Well done all around. Thanks, DC72. Abbreviated you there. All right, now we have one from Ed. You're up first to talk about this. Okay. Um, all right, well, technical ability, I would say you pretty much nailed it. The exposure is perfect. The shadows are perfect. The highlights are perfect. And the water is soft, which is what you wanted to do. So it a little bit blurred and you can see the motion and the waves and um, composition I mean I just I, I have nothing to critique I like that that my eye jumps to several parts of the image I would say this is the first thing and it's you know and then it goes up here and then just yeah and then I don't know I don't really have much to add. I think it's a nicely composed shot um, technically done really well. I love the colors. Um, I don't think I would change anything about this image. Nice. I, I like it a lot too. Um, this is the kind of image that I've wanted to make for quite a while in that it's a longer exposure in this kind of rocky beach and so you get um, what was probably a lot of wave action going on is all smoothed out and you get this kind of misty appearance here. I really like that. Um, I see you're, you are maxed out at f32 uh, and eight seconds and so um, you know I wonder if you stayed a little bit longer was this dawn or was this we don't know if this was a dawn three beautiful colors sunset no, it was sunset so I wonder if you waited a little bit longer so that you didn't have to shoot at such a high um, aperture and could still get a shutter speed of eight seconds or even longer what that would have looked like I just wonder I'm not saying that would have made it better the other thing I wonder is uh, I, my eye keeps getting drawn to the, um, this big orange cliff here, and I think I'd like to see a little bit less of that and give this point of land that comes out with the rocks uh, just a little bit more space so that we could see that it was ending out there. Um, so shifting to the right just a little bit. But you know what? If uh, you had shot that and then I looked at it, it's quite possible that I said, I would say, oh, I have this bright of orange cliff and I'm really curious what the rest of it looks like. So. Again, really nice image overall. Beautiful colors. This gradient here of this purple, pink, magenta up, up to blue um, is very nicely done. I do see, though, because you're shooting at f32, we got dust spots on the sensor. So you can see there's one right here above the cliff. There's one right above that first bump and just to the right of that. So that's one of the reasons why you want to shoot. You want to avoid shooting at such a high aperture. Or just clean your sensor. Or clean your sensor. But I heard from somebody today who tried to clean their sensor. A scary story. So. Okay. Thanks, Ed. Ho, oh, ho, baby. My turn to go first, isn't it? So another from Angie. Again, Angie, you lucked out. She had the snowdrop at the beginning. This um, is what I would call, I think, a high-key image, which is, you know, purposefully uh, very bright. Parts of it are overexposed. Like, you know, we've lost data back here. Um, but not in a bad way at all. Um, so 1 200th of a second f4 ISO 450 millimeter used off-camera flash with umbrella picture was edited with a black and white filter. So you can see the little baby's got the little catch lights from the off-camera flash in the eyes. Uh, those are quite nice. The baby's baby is exposed. All of the important bits are exposed very nicely. Uh, you know, cut off just a tiny bit of the hair at the top, I would either, it's, you know, it's, it's too little to seem purposeful, um, and, or I should say not, a, no, I don't know what I'm saying. So you either need to crop in closer or pull back just a bit so that you're not cutting anything off the baby or, you know, consciously cutting off more of the top of the head. Um, but really nice image frame nicely, almost center, but just off to the right enough that the, the feet are sticking back there and I like it. And the baby's got a nice, curious, not so sure, um, but genu genuinely happy expression, I would say. 
Yep, and I think that's really what makes this photo. I think it's a baby's expression. He looks, he or she <laughs> looks, um... Yeah, we don't know. Content and happy. And I bet the parents love this shot because it showcases the baby's face and it's nice and crisp. Um, one word about, so in terms of technical ability, I'm kind of not loving how bright this is for a couple of reasons. I realize that it's meant to be a high key image, but there's kind of a strange shadow underneath the baby's head that's a little bit distracting. So I may have tried to fill in a little bit to not create such a high key image or shot a little bit more straight on instead of placing the umbrella on, you know, camera right above the camera. Above, yeah. Another thing that kind of bother, bothers me about this image is the corners. It, I can see, so these these parts are kind of distracting. The wrinkles. And, yeah, the wrinkles in the fabric or the, you know, whatever the background is, are a little bit distracting to me. They, if this is going to be, a, you know, a professional portrait of, of a baby, and it may not, it may just be, you know, for fun, I'm not sure. But say that you were going to sell this image to somebody. I would expect this to be cleaned up. I would expect, and this is a high key image, I would expect this to be brightened, this corner to be brightened as well, and um, and the overall skin to be a little bit, a little bit less bright. So it just looks a little bit too... We are, the baby has just on the left and the right above the eyebrows, you can see just a little bit of brow furrow and then it's lost in the middle. And it looks like it's about, like you're about to clip some highlights in the skin. And even though this is a high key image, I don't think that skin should be that bright. So, so yeah, so maybe, you know, lower your exposure a little bit, you know, t turn down the power on your flash. And then definitely, definitely clean these parts. And that would be pretty image. easy to do in Photoshop. You know, a quick, quick selection tool and then just, would you gauzy and blur it? No, no, I would just, I would make it pure white. Because the background is supposed to be pure white. So I would just make it pure white. Okay. And if you want to be really, really efficient, um, there are ways to shoot with the background in such a way that you can get a high key image. So one of the ways is to also light the background as in addition to the subject to make it completely white. Yeah. So it just You would need another flash. You would probably, yeah. yes. Yeah. Or you could do a composite, you know, like light up the background and then paste it on later. Mm. So Okay. But I mean, yeah, select all of this and then just make it completely white. Otherwise, I like the composition and and everything else in it. Like I said, I bet the parents love this shot because it's really sweet. Good shot. Thank you, Angie. Okay. Um, this is Tim, right? He's not, what's he using his name? Fade to Black is his Flickr name. Um, he has been posting up here for quite a while and just done amazing, amazing light paintings. And so this one was picked tonight. Um, and technical details here, there's a lot of lighting that's going on. I'm pretty sure if this picture was taken without any human intervention, um, you all you would see is a couple streaks of stars in the sky. Otherwise, I'm going to guess that it's pretty much uh, just dark. So he's got these cool LED things that he... I, I should get Tim to do a guest post sometime. He has four... Um, the trigger trap guys that kind of goes into some of the, his working because there's a lot going on here But you've lit up the bridge very nicely. That's all exposed good Just a tiny bit of you know overexposure from the light coming over here on the left in a couple places But not, they're so small. It's not really worth talking about um, It's actually kind of neat that you got some star streaks up in the sky It gives you a little bit of a sense of the time that you're working here with a shutter speed of 841 seconds um, so math off the top of my head, that's quite a bit of time that you're working with here. And so that also leads me to think that yes, it is completely dark um, when you aren't lighting it up. Now, as far as composition goes, I like it. We got this nice arch of the bridge and I like that we are kind of angled and it goes up and then the underside of the bridge is displayed on the other side in this 
bobble is right there at the top. Um, is it possible to get a reflection under the water below? Probably not in this because the, the light levels from these LEDs aren't just quite enough to reach back down to the bottom, but it would be neat to see that uh, reflection sometimes in the shot. And then as far as speaking to me, I almost wonder if the bridge could be just, um, you know, just a little bit less lit. Uh, so it was more of a kind of, here is this dark bridge, and then this LED would really stand out on top. But overall, really fun. Love, um, love watching everything that you've put up here because you've done some amazing light painting and very inspirational. Yeah, so I, I agree with a lot of the things that you said. I think I especially agree with the fact that I would like to see less of this image lit up. So there are, excuse me, I just almost knocked over the plant. There are these branches, for example, that I wish weren't that lit because they're not, they don't seem that interesting to me. And maybe this part also does not seem all that interesting to me. You know, there's something to be said about very meticulously lighting parts of an image and creating highlights and shadows to create visual interest and to uh, sort of bring attention to the main part of the image. So you can carefully select what parts of the image you light to make a more interesting image, if that makes sense. I feel like I just rambled a lot. But yeah, I just feel like there are parts of the image that don't necessarily need to be lit to make a very, very interesting photo. Um, there is a photographer that I sort of follow. His name is M.P. Kelly. It's M-P-K-E-L-L-E-Y. And he is an architectural photographer and he does lots of image composites where he will take multiple exposures, multiple long exposures, and sort of light certain parts of a building he's photographing or a room that he's photographing, he does it really, really well. And so he brings attention to the parts that are really important by lighting them, lighting them nicely, and then the rest of the image is not so bright. So um, I think you might enjoy looking at his work. So maybe look it up and, you know, have a look. Check it out. Thanks, Fade to Black, also known as Tim. All right, moving on from Tomislav, we have, oh, this you're supposed to go first. We have two little sparrows. Two little sparrows. Um, in terms of technical ability, I think that the exposure is really well done and the lens selection is great because it, you know, it separates the little birds from the background. Also, the shutter speed it was kind of perfect because you can get a little bit of the motion of the wings um, but still capture the bird frozen. You know, it looks like he was just about to fly off with that little piece of food. And so, so yeah, so great settings to capture this great portrait of these two little birds. In terms of composition, the horizon feels a little bit crooked, so it feels like it's leaning left a little bit for a couple of reasons. I think the first main reason is this big shadow and then this pole that's sort of leaning off the frame and then, then you have this. So these are all really distracting elements that I think I may remove in Photoshop if you couldn't remove them on the original frame. I understand that, you know, you only have like one sixteen hundredth of a second to capture this little bird in this place. So there's only so much you can prepare for. Um, but yeah, I would have retouched this out and sort of cleaned it up and then made the photo more about the birds. I, I like it. And, uh, you know, in the interest of time, I don't want to cut anybody short, but I, I don't have much to add other than straighten it a little bit. I think you're shooting with a Sigma 18-35, to 35, which is very exciting. Uh, these guys look sharp. It looks like it could be a little over sharpened um, up around the bird itself. And so I don't know if that was done in post or not. Um, but really neat story here of got it and making his or her escape um, and the uh, blur of the wing is cool too so that's a nice shot yeah i like it too thank you thomas law all right we got one from ian here um and i think i do go first so technical qualities we've got the 18 to 
135, zoomed all the way into 135, 1 250th of a second at 5 ISO 250. That tells me that um, I believe with the 700D at your um, ISO was on auto. Nicely exposed, uh, but you know, it's similar to the baby where that little bit of the top of the hair was cut off. So I'm moving on to composition now. And we got a little bit of the left and the bottom of this uh, image cut. And so, but not enough for it to feel really deliberate. And so I'm having trouble figuring out what the subject is here. And Ian, you might say, well, the, the subject is, uh, I think this ice in this jar with a little tea light floating on top. Get closer, get even closer. Um, and I, you know, in this case, I think it would be fine to center that in the middle. But really nice detail on the rim of the glass here. Um, this is interesting, but it's, it is hard to tell for sure if it's ice um, or if it's maybe melted wax from a million small tea candles that went before this one. So I'm not quite sure, but I'd like to get a little bit tighter uh, and, and know a little bit more about this picture. Yep, I agree. I think that I would have liked to see that mason jar take center in the uh, of the frame and be the subject of the image. Another thing that I sort of, so that relates to composition. I think the composition should have been centered. Um, technical abilities, yep, yeah, like Toby said, I like the choice of lens and the choice of focal length that you chose, um, that you selected, because it does bring focus to the mason jar and blurs the background and the background stress. You can just see the texture of the background. So that's, it has a nice, it's a nice visual. I don't love how dirty, like all this dirt and this, I just don't know what it is. So it kind of, and maybe this is what you meant. Maybe your goal for this image was just kind of people, make people wonder and sort of gross them out a little bit. I mean, I, I wouldn't say I'm grossed out, but, because I'm not. But I just, I would like to know what this stuff is going on is. I just, I don't know what it is. And so, I don't know. I, mm -hmm doesn't make me find this photo interesting. Thank you, Ian. And our last image of the night, you're up first, Christina. Great. So, I, in terms of technical ability, I like the exposure of this image because it's obviously, the, the clouds are very ominous and you captured the shadows in the clouds and the highlights in the clouds really well. And then your post-processing was such that it added, you know, moodiness to this photo. So, you know, made the clouds look more ominous. And I think you probably saturated a little bit of the greens, too. I could be mistaken, but it, this photo looks desaturated. And and I like that. It looks really great. Um, in terms of composition, I, I like the crop. I like the wide panoramic sort of crop and I like where this house was framed I think I wish it would be either to the left or to the right or dead center because it's not doing either of those three things but it doesn't bother me too too much um, all of the other elements of the image are placed in such a way that it all brings your attention back to the house so in terms of composition I think that was really well done and then again, you know, going back to the moodiness of it, I think you used your technical elements and your compositional elements to create a sort of ominous kind of mood. And that's kind of what you were trying to communicate. So you did all of that, put it all together and did that really well. Um, so yeah, and one last thing, I think that your use of color, of it's almost selective color, I think you used it really well to lead your eyes up back to the top of the frame so um so yeah so i like that they were very conscious about every decision you took to make this image i feel i feel very similar uh i you know i love the framing um i think the composition is good i'd like to see it as a full black and white or grayscale image um i'm curious to see what that would look like because I, part of me is a little distracted by the fact that really the only two colors we have in here um, are yellow and then this bush in the background looks flowering. Um, so I'd like to see that. The other thing that I'm curious about 
is if we shifted our composition to the left a little bit, we, I see this hint of a walkway here. And if we could, and it almost looks like if we got too far, we'll have another bush blocking us, so you're limited there. But could we get over a little bit further to have that uh, leading up to the uh, mansion or the house, um, whatever we want to call that, um, and maybe raise up just a tiny bit um, from here. And that would also, that might be bad in that then we are having less of this intersection, with the house and the tree and that then it might not seem so deliberate and where this is right now this house or tree seems to kind of be deliberately slightly hidden um, behind here especially the most interesting what might be one of the most interesting parts and that's the, the turret although that might be on the back side so overall i like i like it a lot i think it's a nice image and a fun one to end on yes so thank you all we tried to keep this shorter but um, we didn't do such a good job and we're nope. going to work on that in the future um, and thank you so much for submitting. There were tons of wonderful images in here, and I will be in the next couple of days spending a little bit of time in here leaving some text comments on those that we didn't get a chance to review. And as I said, we've now dropped that limit to two a week, so I really want to think about, I want you to think about the images you are putting in here. Um, really kind of pick ones that speak um, to your work and to your interests. And I thank you so much for contributing. Yeah. Thank you very much. And we love the feedback, so feel free to give us feedback so that we can make this better and better for you guys. We really appreciate it. That's right. That's great. And if you're watching this and you haven't already subscribed, please take a moment and subscribe down below. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.